Hi, it's Daisy from MyWidowedHeart.com. How do you start living again after loss? Let me start off by saying that no, I don't have all the answers. I cannot give you some kind of manual that will bring the joy back into your life instead of just merely existing. I simply want to share my journey along with some tips and ideas that might be helpful to you. It's about hope and the assurance that, yes, life can be good again after loss. One of the hardest things about losing someone you love is learning to live again. When I lost my husband, it felt like I had fallen into the deepest, darkest pit. It was as if all the joy, the light and the colors had been permanently erased from my life. I was lost. My whole world had fallen apart. All I could do was think about my husband all day and cry. I didn't really live. I existed. It was nothing but darkness and grief. I barely managed, could barely function. I had widow brain pretty bad for about a year, and it felt like life had nothing to offer anymore. To me, one of the cruelest things about loss is that life simply goes on while you, as a griever, just had the rug pulled out from under your feet. But you have no choice, you have to keep going somehow, and at some point you have to learn to live again. Nobody and nothing prepares you for what it's like after losing someone you love, someone whose life was so closely interwoven with yours. Your life changes drastically, it's turned upside down. Nothing is the same, nothing, including you, will ever be the same again. So please be kind to yourself, be patient. Know that it takes time and lots of grief work to start seeing glimmers of light break through the darkness. Here are some tips to help you find joy again and start living again. Start small, very small. What could give you just a little joy, even if it's only for a few minutes? A good heartwarming cup of coffee? Or maybe a special treat from the bakery? Listening to a favorite song? Sitting outside in the sunshine for a while? Try to do something every day that will bring you a bit of joy. Think of small everyday things you like and then consciously enjoy them. Focus on whatever you choose that day and take the experience in with all your senses. Get outside and go for a walk. Look around as you walk and mindfully take in all the colors, the smells and the sounds. Walk with awareness. Is there something that lifts your mood a bit? Maybe pretty flowers, intricate leaves on a tree birds singing, or maybe seeing a toddler play. What made you smile a little? What was a pleasant moment during your walk? Replay that moment in your mind back at home. If you have a hobby, slowly start getting into it again. If you don't have a hobby, think of something you used to enjoy in the past, maybe even prior to your relationship with your lost loved one. What were your interests back then? What did you like to do in your spare time back then? Or maybe there is something new that interests you. Try it out. You don't have to jump into it full force. Take it slow, dip your toes into the water and see how it goes. Evaluate your everyday surroundings. Look at your furniture, furniture arrangement, decor, etc. Does this still work for you? Your situation has changed and so it only makes sense that some things may need to be adjusted to this new life. Are there items that are no longer practical? Items that make you sad all the time? Maybe you've always wanted to change the look of your living room but never got around to it. New curtains, new pillows in your favorite color, maybe a new rug. Go for it. Changing my surroundings and adding home accessories in my favorite colors really lifted my mood. Some of you might be the opposite and feel comforted by having everything stay the same in the house. But for me, it was too painful to constantly see reminders of him and everything before the loss. I needed that change. That being said, please don't hastily get rid of things. Try to wait at least a year before giving away furniture or clothing and so on because you might have a change of heart later and regret it. Instead, if you can, store items out of sight or in boxes until you are 100% sure that you no longer want it. 
Sometimes just rearranging furniture and adding splashes of color with accessories can create a whole new look. Try to make your place your own, whatever that means to you. Go somewhere by yourself, maybe even a place you've never been to before. It could be for just an hour or two, or maybe even a day trip. It might feel uncomfortable, awkward and scary at first. It will get easier. Explore. What did you like during your outing? Think of at least one thing that brought you some joy. Even if most of the outing wasn't enjoyable, treasure the seconds or minutes that actually were. It's progress. It's all about baby steps. Then make plans for your next outing. Go out to eat by yourself. It's a tough one, but you can do it. Maybe start with breakfast first if dinner by yourself sounds too intimidating. This was really hard for me. I felt like everyone was staring at me, which of course wasn't true. For dinner, if the restaurant has a bar, maybe ask to sit there for your meal. It might feel less awkward than sitting at a table by yourself. The person seating you may actually suggest the bar anyway, since they like to keep the tables available for groups, especially if they're busy. If you feel really awkward and uncomfortable by yourself, pretend you're a secret food critic. Focus on the food. Think about what you'd write in a review if you really were a secret food critic. I know it sounds silly, but this has helped me before. Try to always have something to look forward to on your calendar. This could be anything, maybe an event, maybe church on Sundays, maybe having lunch with a friend or a grandchild's upcoming birthday party. I know it's hard to find anything to look forward to when you're grieving, but try to find something, no matter how small, even if it's just a warm sunny day in the forecast and a chance for you to enjoy the beautiful weather. Connect with others. It's so important to have people in your life to talk to, especially when you're grieving. Co-workers, family members, friends. I highly recommend connecting with fellow grievers through a grief support group, an online grief community, or maybe your church. It can be so helpful to hear other grievers' stories and what they're going through and to share those experiences. Even though everyone's grief journey is different, a lot of us go through similar emotions and issues and we can support each other. Connecting with other grievers was, and still is, an important part of my grief work and healing. Grief work. This ties in with what I just said about connecting with others. You cannot ignore your grief. For you to be able to enjoy life again, you have to address your grief and work on it. Time alone won't heal those wounds. Please join a grief support group, do grief counseling or something similar. Also, there are lots of resources online, books, videos, podcasts and so on. I cannot stress enough how important it is to work on and through your grief. It's the foundation for being able to live again after loss, to experience joy again. Grief will never go away completely, but you learn to live with it. In a way, it becomes part of you, just as your loved one will always be a part of you, no matter how long it's been. Finding joy in life is going to be tough. You're going to have setbacks, a lot of them. You might think it's hopeless and that life has nothing to offer anymore, but please don't give up. Go slow, little by little. Make yourself open to joy and the simple pleasures in life, even if it's just for a few seconds at first. Last but not least, when you finally experience some joy again in your life, do not feel guilty. I've struggled with that a lot, but you have to remember that your lost loved one would want you to be happy again. He or she wouldn't want you to be sad for the rest of your life. Being sad constantly for years and years does nothing to honor and remember your loved one. Carry your loved one in your heart and enjoy each day you have on this earth. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's something that has helped you find joy again after loss, please comment below and share with everyone. Also, go check out my website at mywidowedheart.com where I share my personal grief journey as well as helpful tips and information for dealing with grief and loss.